Welcome back to part five of this tech talk. In this section, we will look at the code arrangement and architecture of the client. I call the graphical user interface, or GUI, the client in this talk and the code. There is a common problem that we want to solve when designing software for a GUI project. Problem is having a responsive system. Otherwise, it would just be a command line interface where you enter a command and wait until it ends before you can do anything else. It is especially true for clients that access data or need to command remote or cloud systems. If you are writing a calculator program that did things that only take milliseconds, then this would be less of a problem. For Aviti, the code for the client is currently just in one file called mainwindow.py. I wrote the client using PySide 6 and I also used the Qt material library to mimic the material design system. The code to enable this is not that complex. I will skip the layout management and basics of building graphical user interfaces using Qt as there are many excellent tutorials on this topic. I found this one by RealPython that is a good beginner tutorial on the subject. I will focus on some topics that are often not covered in many tutorials because I used my own flavor of the method of solving the particular problem. This is not too unusual though, as more often than not, there are infinite ways to program a solution but many of them are somewhat related. Again, I would be honored to discuss better or much better ways to do this. I have a hunch that I haven't yet used the best method as I don't work in Python cute GUIs daily. Now on the way that I use to solve the problem, first, I create a base class called base grpc thread. It has a signal called done which we emit when we have either received the response from the server or there is some network error or some other error. Backtracking a little bit, Qt has a beautiful way to address event-driven programming through the system they call signals and slots. Again, there are other excellent tutorials on this matter. I found a fun one by Velcode that I will also link to the description. Quick one sentence refresher, zero or more slots can connect to a given signal. When a signal is emitted, the methods in the slots are called one by one. Now to the thread run method, the code is boilerplate for calling grpc using the generated class files. Another quick mention, since I have not mentioned this before, the make file has the command to generate the grpc code using Python grpc tools. So I only have to type make grpc zen if the interface definition or protocol between the client and the server is changed. This code was inspired by Martin Hines' implementing grpc server using Python that I will link to the description of this video. Now back to my code, I create a bunch of thread classes from the base classes. One each for each request that I need to make to the server. For example, here are the ones for the heartbeat, water plant, and get data. If I need to pass an extra parameter like this plant ID, I pass it to the constructor and store it until I need to make the remote procedure call. Now, when I'm initializing the GUI, I create a timer called the heartbeat timer. When this timer beats, I spawn a new thread to asynchronously get the data. The done signal is connected to another GUI method to update the graph, for example. Here is a video of the running system. You can see that the sensor data are not evenly spaced as we record and pass the last time we, we were successful in reading the sensor. If the network is down for a while or if it takes time to connect to other servers while data from a given server is available, this approach handles the responsiveness of the GUI gracefully. Even though it takes a few seconds to get the data, because we have several levels of asynchronous calls 
The GUI is still responsive as one expects in a modern bug-free system. Now we move to the following sections, integration and testing. See you there.